welcome back to the channel today guys and man i'm smiling right now but can we all agree that we've had a pretty sad week when it's come to anime episodes guys it's been a pretty heavy week first we had oshinoko gut punching the community for the second time by the way second time <laughs> just absolutely eviscerating everyone's emotions and now we have today with hell's paradise with the death of Tenza, who, I'll be honest, guys, I always really liked in this series. I, I'm still upset for when this happened in the manga, guys. I remember that. I'm still, like, not happy about it. Like, it really sucks. And it's just as heavy today as it was then. They even gave us that little bit at the end of the episode, too, just to really rub salt in the wound. Like, damn you. But... Without further ado, let's just get straight into it and talk about Hell's Paradise Episode 8 today, because it's a heavy one. So our episode begins with the episode itself telling us, the viewers, that yeah, you're going to be sad this episode. As we transition into Tenza's backstory, as we hear, as far back as I could remember, people always said the same things about me. Trash. Good for nothing. Useless. I was born and raised in the slums. My parents had neither the resources nor desire to feed me. When I was hungry, I stole and I took. Aside from killing, I'd do anything. I was free. And it's here, as we see, when he even runs into some samurais, they don't stop him either, as he beats them down because they look down on him. But it's in this moment we see that his luck finally run out as he comes face to face with Yamada, Asamon, Shion. But it's here we transition back to the island as we transition to Tenza Narugai, still trying to figure out what to do as she tells him, you know, we're not going to find a current leading off the island wandering this beach endlessly. The sun and the sand will just exhaust us. As he tells her, damn it, stop being right all the time. There are bugs and monsters in the woods. I don't want to go in there. As she tells him, you know, we could just defeat them by working together. But he tells her, now that I know you're a woman, though, I would like to avoid danger. As the Ruka is just like, oh my god, really? That's totes so cool. <laughs> As Tenzai says, let's just play it safe, even if it takes longer, okay? But it's here in this moment, we see that fate has other things in store for the both of them, as we see the appearance of a mysterious person, who I will tell you guys right now is named Sujin. The anime didn't say that, but that's this character's name. As they say, the forest was noisy. It was unusual. I saw the corpses of many Soshin. Did you do that? As Tenzai immediately says, we need to run now. And it's here as they're running. Within seconds, Jin has caught right back up to them. And immediately sends Tenza flying. And as Jin tries to take out Narugai, she's actually able to dodge all the attacks as he tells her, <laughs> you move well for a human. And it's here in this moment, Tenza springs up and actually ends up blinding Jun, cutting his eyes. Now, this would have been an incredible moment if it was against anyone else but someone from the island, as it quickly regenerates back. As Tenza falls back and says, all right, our, our legitimate only option is to run now if that didn't work. I don't have much stamina but I take pride in the quickness of my blade. As we see in one fell swoop, he's able to bisect June, literally cutting his arms and head off in one swift motion. And it's in this moment, they book it out of there again. Who can blame them? But yet again, Jin catches up to them as he tells them, you really tore my clothes, huh? But it's in this moment, quite literally in the nick of time, we see a sword go flying as it actually cuts Jin's head off again. As we see, it was Shion who tells them immediately, run. And as they're running, Narugai realizes that, wait a minute, he's blind, but he's running through the forest regardless. What's up with that? 
As Tenza says, yeah, he apparently uh, sees and smells using sounds and all that. I don't know how it works, but cool, huh? <laughs> Quite literally like Daredevil, if you think about it, guys. And it's here after they're able to get away for a moment's time. Tenzai tells Narugai, you know, now that this guy's here, we're going to be okay. After all, I owe Shion my life. And he taught me how to use a sword. He was his master. As Shion immediately hits him in the head and says, All right, you were relying too much on your speed back there. And your movements were sloppy. Go for the head or feet first against an opponent like that, dummy. I taught you better. As Tenza says, man, not even, not even circumstances like this can stop you from being my teacher, huh? <laughs> I'm actually kind of relieved. And it's here Shion starts explaining what he's been doing this entire time on the island, as he tells them. You know, I completed my duty, and I was on my way home. And seeing as how I was unable to find a current leading away from the island, I kept searching for one endlessly. I found what seemed to be a current leading out, but I heard a noise and detected a presence like nothing I'd experienced before. So I decided to start searching for others who were also heading home. But it's here in this moment, Shion points his sword at Narugai and asks flat out, Now it's your turn to explain. As he asks Tenza, why are you protecting a criminal? You were told to execute criminals immediately if they violated the rules or the unexpected occurred. That's what I did with my criminal. As he says, she tried to seduce me, so I executed her. As he tells them, depending on your answer, your execution may be in order. As Tenza tells him flat out, this child has committed no crime. But it's here in this moment, Shion hits him with a reality check. As he tells him, I've memorized most of the contents of the roster. I know the circumstances of every criminal here. But the times we live in dictate what is a crime, Tenza. The Yamada Asamon are the blades swung down by the times. It would be illogical for a sword to choose who it cuts. The actions of a single man, you, could threaten the entire clan. And it's here Tenza just speaks from his heart as he tells him, but you taught me how to use a sword. When I was a homeless scoundrel, you took me in, even though you weren't obligated to. As Shion says, it's because I sensed resourcefulness and potential in you. As Tenza tells him, it's the same thing for me. I sense there's potential in a world where this child can live freely. And it's here as they're having their standoff with each other. Shion remembers exactly what Tenza was like when he was still his student. As he says, all right, fine, if you insist. I won't kill her. As Tenza says, all right, now that that's settled, let's not waste any time checking out that current you found. But it's here in this moment, again, we see the cruelty of this island on full display as we see Jun Jin suddenly appear out of nowhere and says, you underestimate me. As Shion immediately grabs them and runs, basically. But it's here we see that Shion did not leave that encounter unscathed his throat slit as Jin says I thought I'd taken off your head with that not bad and as we see Tenza desperately trying to attack Jin to defend themselves Jin just tells him casually I've gotten used to your movements and it's here Tenza thinks to himself what should we do should we run right now but then quickly decides no I have to kill this thing here and now and it's here as Tenza uses his ultimate move on Jin, and Jin casually dodges everything. He just tells him immediately, I told you. I'm used to that. As he casually puts four holes inside Tenza's chest right here. And it's here, like this series loves to do, we transition to another flashback of Tenza during his training. As he asks, Master, Why'd you take in a guy like me? As Shion tells him, you know, taking lives is our job. 
So I wish to spend the rest of my time helping people. You might be a bit rough around the edges, but I sense potential in you. And it's here as we transition to their training, we see that Tenza is not very good right now. As Shion tells him, you're sloppy with your sword. You're allowing your emotions to control you too much. Your rage and your doubt. But as Tenza tells him this is pointless, Shion tells him, look, I'm not asking you to follow the samurai code from the start. But someday, if you find something you want to protect, the sword skills you've developed will definitely help you. And as he continues, he tells Tenza, look at that cherry blossom. Its trunk is lean and its flowers are still buds. But buds contain all manner of potential. And so do you. The day will come when your buds of potential blossom. But it's here in this moment. Instead of being inspired to work harder, Tenza remembers all the people who have looked down on him in his life. As he tells Shion, I don't have potential. I don't have status or money. Since the day I was born, I've never had potential. As he tells Xion, I'm quitting. I want to live how I want to live. But instead of getting mad right here, Xion tells him, Okay, fine. But I have one condition. Anytime, anywhere, land a single blow on me. If you can do that, then I'll allow you to quit. And it's here we see that not wanting to deal with Shion, Tenza actually tries to leave later that night, in the dead of night, to where he doesn't have to deal with him, as he actually runs into Aizen. As he tells him, you know, Shion told me about your guys' deal. Have you already landed a hit on him to be leaving like this? As Tenza asks him, are you just going to end up dragging me back? But Aizen tells him, nah, you do as you please. But before you go, I want you to take a walk with me. And it's here while these two are on a walk, we see that Aizen ends up taking him to a cemetery where Xion's former junior lays. As Aizen tells Teza, or Teza, his name was Teshin. Just like you, he was desolate. He had talent, but he lacked motivation. And in the end, just like you, Teshin said he'd live how he pleased and left the dojo. And for a while, things stayed the same. But one day, Shion went out to test his sword like he always did, as he stood before a criminal about to be beheaded. But Shion wouldn't lower the sword he raised. Because Shion realized the criminal before him was Teshin. And it's here he explains to Tenza that, you see, after leaving the dojo, Teshin eventually struggled to feed himself and turned to crime. And as Tenza asks what Shion did in that situation, Aizen tells him he killed him as a Yamada Asamon. And his last words to him were, I'm sorry, master. It was in this moment that Xion became passionate about teaching his juniors and began helping people. As he tells Tenza flat out, if you live the life of a scoundrel, you might eventually end up the same way. As he asks him again, so, will you run from this place without landing a single blow on him? And it's here as we transition back to Xion entering the dojo one day. We see Tenza was already there waiting for him. As he says, Master, please spar with me right now. As he thinks to himself, I've never seriously devoted myself to anything before. But I want to land a hit on him. He's the first person and only person to recognize my potential. As he says, Someday, will I find someone I want to protect? But it's here as we transition back to the present, we see that reality is a cold mistress indeed. As we see that Tenza took a fatal blow. And as he looks over at his comrades, he says, I see. 
I'm dying, huh? We're all gonna be killed by this monster. But it's here in this moment, with literally everything he has left, he musters up all his strength and says, I won't let that happen. As he cold cocks the shit out of Jin right here. And as he's beating him down, he says, even if I die, I'll make sure they escape. I don't care how I do it. I'll do everything I can to buy time for them. But as Jin does yet another blow to his gut, Tenza immediately realizes that you guys need to run. Please run. As we see, he's begging Shion to take Narugai and run, even coughing up blood to try to get the words out to save them. As we see that with an extremely heavy heart, Shion got the message, and he takes Narugai and runs. As Narugai is crying her eyes out. And it's here, now that it's just the two of them, we hear Tenza says, Master, I'm sorry. Narugai, please live. You have so much potential. As he thinks to himself, potential, huh? I wonder what kind of potential I had. And it's here the show really just continuously punches you in the fucking gut as it shows you what could have been. The future that could have been if they were able to escape this island right here. As we see the actual cold reality that we're in instead. As Jin just tosses his body aside and says, he was pretty tough. And as we transition to Xi'an and Narugai having gotten away, she's screaming at him saying, why are we abandoning him? I'm going back. As he tells her through gritted teeth, this is what Tenzo wanted. As she says, but you're his master, right? Isn't he your student? As he tells her, he was more than that. We were brothers who wanted the same thing. And he risked his life for us. I can't waste that. We can't beat that monster right now. But I swear we'll make them pay. And as we transition back to Tenza lying there. We see the cherry blossoms and the curtain fall on his story. But we're not done just yet. The show has to give us one last gut punch to really let it sink in. As we transition back to the flashback of them training. And Tenza lands a blow on Shion. And he's so excited about it. As Shion says, that was impressive. Now... You're free to do as you please. But instead of leaving, Tenza tells him, Master, I humbly request that you continue teaching me to use a sword. As Shion happily says, of course. As our episode ends and his light fades away. And man, I told you guys at the beginning of this episode, but I still to this day don't like how quickly he dies in the series. Just to give you guys some reference, he dies in chapter 21 of the manga, really early on. To be fair, the manga's only like, what, 127 chapters, but they kill one of the best characters in the show pretty damn quickly. And it's brutal, but it's real. It's realistic that the weaker people would die first. But man, does it not make it any more bittersweet. Or any less bittersweet. Because fuck. Again, we've had a lot of sad episodes this week. Oh boy. But this was quite a good episode of Hell's Paradise, obviously. So I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Because I know people are going to be sad to see Tenza gone. I know that. So, oh man, let me know your thoughts down below, guys. And until next time, I hope you guys have a great day, week, month, and year. And until then, deuces, have a blessed day, and I'll see you guys next time. Deuces.